Hello, and welcome to another instalment of a series of videos in which I'll be talking you through the basics of the programming language Python. If you haven't watched the first few videos yet, then I suggest you do that now, otherwise, let's get on with it. In the previous episode, we looked at understanding data types as well as how certain mathematical operators have an effect on them. In this episode, we'll be looking at various ways we can manipulate and gather information from strings. As a quick reminder, a string is a collection of letters, numbers, and symbols. We refer to each individual element in a string as a character. The 128 characters available to Python are those which are defined by the ASCII standard. Strings have a number of functions which can be used to alter or measure certain metrics of that string. The functions we'll be looking at are length, split, count, and index. The length function, when used on a string, returns the number of characters in that string. We use it similar to the print function, wrapping it around our string. We can store the value returned by this function into a variable, or we can print out the answer directly. The rest of the functions from here on out are applied a little differently to the functions we've used so far. So far, we've used general functions that Python can apply to a variety of data types. We use them by passing in our variable as the parameter. The following three functions that we're going to be looking at are string-specific functions and are applied directly to a particular variable. Rather than wrapping our variable in a function as we have done previously, we follow the variable with a dot and then the function name in a set of brackets. The reasoning here will make a little more sense in a future episode, but for now understand that these are string-only functions. The split function separates a string based on a character that you pass into the function. Let's say we wanted to split a string to return an individual words. We can split the string based on the character space. The count function counts the number of times a particular character appears in your string. We pass the character we want to count into the function itself. For example, if we wanted to count how many S's there are in Mississippi, we do so as demonstrated on screen. The index function returns as the position of the first instance of a character that we pass into it. Let's say we wanted to find the position of the first E in computer science. We do so as demonstrated on screen. The number returned is the index of that character. We might notice something odd here. The first E is the seventh character, but it gives us back six. This is because indexes, in most programming languages, start at zero. Whilst we're on the topic of indexing, we're able to get the character of a string at a particular index. This is achieved by following the string with a pair of square brackets, the index of the character you want to return placed between these brackets. If we wanted the third character in the word aardvark, we'd place a two between these brackets. If we wanted the first character, we'd place a zero between these brackets. If we wanted the last character, Python lets us cheat, and we'd place a minus one between these brackets. There's plenty of other little tricks that Python allows you to perform, but we'll save a lot of these for an upcoming episode. With this functionality in mind, it's time to make a program of our own. We are to create a program in which we ask the user for a sentence, we're then to estimate the average length of each word in the sentence. Just before we dig into this, remember if you want to give this a go without any help, then pause the video now and get going, otherwise let's begin. Now there are two ways of doing this. The easy way, and more importantly the lazy way, or the tricky way, in which we start playing with things outside the scope of this video. I think we'll pick the easy way. So first things first, to calculate the average length of each word, we need two things. The total sentence length, and the number of words in that sentence. We then take the total sentence length, and divide it by the number of words in the sentence for our answer. We're only estimating, so don't worry if we're slightly out. As we've previously covered, to get a sentence from the user, we use the input command. We can then store their sentence in a variable called sentence. To get the total length of the sentence, we use the len command on the variable we created. We'll then store this value in an intermediate variable. Next, to get the number of words in the sentence. We'll be lazy with this. We can assume that each word in the sentence will be separated by a space. What we can do with this is just count how many space characters there are using the count command, and then add one for the final word. We can store this in another intermediate variable. From here we can then print out an estimate of the average words by dividing the total number of characters by the number of words. Although some of you might notice an issue here. We've counted the spaces when we were counting the total characters, when this isn't what we should be doing. We should only be counting the letter characters. What we can do here then is subtract the number of spaces from the sentence length, so we're only left with the letter characters. We then divide this answer by the total number of words. And there we have it, we've got our answer, and we've successfully used these string specific functions to estimate the average word length of a sentence. Of course there's hundreds of different ways of doing this, but if you've got the same answer as me, then that's fine. There are ways in which we could have got a much closer answer than what we did get, but for the sake of demonstration, we've done what we wanted. In the next episode we'll be looking at conditions and how we can create multiple pathways through our code. But until then, thank you so much for watching and remember to practice the skills that we've looked at between this and the next episode. Again, I've added some handy links to websites that'll help you out with your coding skills in the description below. 
As requested by a couple of you, I'll be pinning keywords and functions used in each video in the comments section, as well as listing them in the description. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, and if you really enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to keep updated with all the videos in this series. But for now, that's pretty much it. Thank you loads again, and see you next time.